Hello again. This is Math 1431 coming to you from the College of DuPage and the title of this lecture is Getting Started on Content and this is being prepared on uh, 217 for the spring 23 semester. As always, please be attentive listeners while watching this video. By way of introduction, the content takeoff is a critical juncture for any flight, and especially for a 12 week Math 1431. I ask you to trust me as your pilot as we become airborne relative to content with this video and keep your seat belts fastened. We begin with uh, the quiz over sections 1.1 through 1.4 in chapter one of your textbook. And the quiz has 10 problems on it. One of them is a calculator problem. Uh, so that uh, number five is not in uh, our course scope per se. Um, and I encourage you to try these before you watch the solutions. So um, go get the book and try these. And then uh, after you solve them, uh, look at the solutions because the solutions will be more meaningful for you that way. Okay, here we go. Number one says solve the linear equation. Uh, you see it here. Um, and the way one solves it is by doing algebra. So we distribute the three and we distribute the minus sign over this, getting these things. And then we're going to get our x's on the left hand side in this case and our numbers on the right hand side. When we do that via these operations, we get 5x equal 10 and dividing both sides by um, Five, you conclude that x is 2. On well, number two, you were to determine whether each uh, of these equations, you have a, b, and c, uh, is an identity, a conditional equation, or a contradiction, and to give the solution set. Okay, so let's begin with part a. In part a, we distribute the minus 2, noting that a minus times a minus is a plus. And then again, we work to get the um, uh, variables on one side and the numbers on the other. But we realize that, oh, we have 4x on this side and 4x on this side. So we're saying, is it ever true that 4x minus 5 is equal to 4x minus 3? And in fact, someone might say, well, I could subtract 4x from both sides, but then you get minus 5 equal minus 3. Well, that's called a contradiction. That means there is no solution. And this is a symbol for the null set. If we move on to problem B, uh, which is shown here, Again, uh, we distribute the uh, five across here and we end up with five X minus nine is equal to five X minus nine. Well, that's true no matter what X is, even if X is a complex number, such a thing is called an identity. And if we're just talking about real numbers, they would say that the solution set is any real number from minus infinity to positive infinity. Finally, we have this one. Uh, we expand the three across there, getting 18 minus three X. We isolate the X and the number, and we put our answer in the lowest terms as 11 over four. Now you see this equation is going to be true when only when X is 11 over four and never at any other time. So consequently, you call it a conditional equation. Uh, number three, we're supposed to solve this equation uh, for y. Now there's a bunch of variables here, so we're, uh, we're treating everything like it is a number except for y. Uh, so we're going to get y on the side of an equation. So we'll move this y to the other side and we'll move this x to that side. So we have a uh, y minus y is equal to three x. We will factor the uh, y out and that gives us a minus one. And then since a is not equal to one, we can divide by it. You could not divide by it if it were zero, but we can divide by it here and we get that y is equal to three x over a minus one. Uh, number four is a word problem about uh, earning interest. Uh, so Johnny deposits some money at two and a half annual interest rate and twice as much money at 3%. Find the amount deposited at each rate if his total annual income interest income is to be $850. All 
Okay, well, annual income means the time is one year. Uh, the formula for simple interest is simple interest is equal to principal times rate times time. And we define variables. We let X be the money at 2.5% interest. Now that is uh, 0 0.025, and this is 0 0.03. And so X is the principal at 2.5%, uh, and 2X is the principal at 3. And we're getting income from both of these. So the interest income is to be 850, so it's this one. Uh, principal times rate times 1. Principal times rate times 1, again, uh, is equal to uh, 850. And uh, what I did is I multiplied all the way through by 1,000 to clear my decimals. Uh, and so what happened is I got uh, 25 here. I get 30 here. Uh, 25 and 30. Uh, well, 30 is times 2, so that is going to be um, 60. Uh, so that is 60 plus 25 is 85x, and I multiplied by 1,000 over here as well, adding three zeros, and then I divide, so I get x is $10,000, and 2x is $20,000. Uh, here on number 6, remember I skipped the one uh, dealing with uh, just calculator issues, and so we're to uh, write uh, minus 4, uh, plus the square root of minus 24 over 8 in standard form, and this is a plus bi, and this is the imaginary unit, the square root of minus 1. Uh, and so we're going to follow directions. So we start with this. So this is minus 4 plus, but we remember that um, i is the square root of minus 1, and the square root of um, 4 is 2, and this is uh, the square root of 6 as I factor that radical all over 8. Now I want to have this in lowest terms. I'm going to divide this 8 into the real part, so minus 4 divided by 8 is negative 1 half, and here I get the square root of uh, 6 over 4 times i. So that's in the form a plus bi. Uh, here in number 7, you're to write the quotient 7 minus 2i over 2 plus 4i in standard form a plus bi, and we employ a great mathematical trick of multiplying by 1 in a clever way. Now we multiply by uh, 1 in the um, uh, top and bottom numerator and denominator, but we're using the fact that a number, like here, 2 plus 4i, times its complex conjugate, which is 2 minus 4i, is going to be a squared plus b squared. And again, this is the whole of 2 uh, plus 4i times that. So I multiply top and bottom by that. So on the bottom, I get a squared plus b squared, uh, which is 20. And then the top, um, 7 times uh, 2 uh, is going to be 14. Uh, the inner and the outer is going to be minus 32i. And then here I'm going to get plus uh, 8i squared. But i squared is minus 1, so this is 14 minus 8 is 6, minus 32i all over 20. Again, it is good form to have this in lowest terms, so this is 3 over 10 minus 8 over 5i. Uh, we have to solve three quadratic equations here. Uh, the first one cannot factor, and so I'm going to solve this using the quadratic formula. The first step is to add the 1 to both sides. So I have this equal to 0, and here's the quadratic formula that you know and love from your algebra course. And so b is uh, minus 1, so this is minus a minus 1, plus or minus. Minus 1 whole squared is 1, minus 4 times a times c, and so this is going to be minus the square root of 11 all over 2a, which is going to be 6. So there are two answers, um, the plus and the minus, uh, and I am dividing by 6 uh, in each one, and notice, my students, that I am putting the i here for the square root of minus 1. So the answer is uh, 1 over 6 plus or minus the square root of 11 uh, over 6 times i. Uh, some of my students would say uh, that this is the ugliest damn number they've ever seen in their life, but I will tell my students each and every time there are no ugly numbers, just like there are no ugly babies. The next one. Uh, from a tradecraft point of view, the best way to solve x squared minus 29 equal to 0 is to use the square root property. So I'm going to throw the 29 on the other side, and I'm going to take the square root. It is important for students to realize that the square root of x squared is not x, it's the absolute value of x, and that means you have to have a plus or minus sign here after you take the square root. So the answer to this is x is equal to, there are two answers, plus or minus the square root of 29.
Last but not least, we're being asked to solve area is equal to one half r squared theta. Now this is the area formula for a circular sector. Now they don't really tell you that, but, but it is. Uh, you study this in math 1432 at the College of DuPage. They ask you to solve it for r. Now r actually in this formula is a radius, and so it'd have to be bigger than or equal to zero, but don't worry about that. They're just saying solve it. So what we're going to do is we're going to isolate the r, and that means we're going to multiply both sides by two, then divide both sides by theta. And so you have 2a over theta is equal to r squared. We'll take the square root of both sides. Now I did say that r really was positive, but in the back of the book, they'll say it's plus or minus the square root of 2a over um, theta. And you notice you got a square root of theta in the denominator. And uh, going back to my school days, that my nuns had me believing that I would go to hell if I didn't rationalize the denominator. Now it turns out it is important to know how to rationalize the denominator. Uh, but it doesn't mean the answer is wrong if you don't. But here, what they do in the final step is they multiply top and bottom uh, by the square root of theta. And so the answer you'll find in the back of the book is r is equal to plus or minus uh, the square root of 2a theta, all divided by theta. Uh, here are the answers from the back of the, your uh, book that you can uh, check if you want. Um, in closing, now more than ever, time is precious. Each day must count. Do the math. It will make you strong. And now more than ever, take care of yourself because self-care is important. And now more than ever, take care of each other because we're all in this together. Uh, we've taken off uh, now and uh, 1.5 will be where we will uh, continue our discussions when we meet, God willing, on Monday. Till then, God bless you all and look forward to studying math 